husband. Hello. What are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about VHS. We just finished watching the magical film that is Roadhouse, starring none other than... Patrick Swayze. What a hunk. And uh, Keith David as a very, very small bit part as a bartender. It was a magical film. I'd never seen it before. Very violent, very <laughs> sexual, lots of boobies and fun. Uh, it was great. And it also... A lot a lot of oiled up Patrick Swayze. Which is always good. And it was a magical moment where we both realised just how much we love VHS. And so we decided to show a little love for that forgotten format uh, and talk about our top five VHS that we own. It's going to be five each. Sia so chose five, Lynn chose five. Uh, a bit across many genres, mm. children's horror, action, comedy. Uh, why do you want to collect VHS, Liam? What is um, it that you like about mainly it? Mainly it's so accessible. Like you go into any op shop and they'll always have some VHS there and they're totally inexpensive as well. Sometimes it's really hard not to buy them all. Yeah. So I'll grab like 10 I... or 15 and I'll force myself like, to put things whenever, back. Whenever we went to the tip in Canberra, they have walls of VHS and they don't have any set price on them. You just take them up to the counter and he'll just look at them and just give you a price. And no generally joke, it's... we bought 40 kilos last time. We had two suitcases and the limit was 20 in each and we were just under. So we bought 40 kilos yeah. of VHS. Yeah, but what do you think it is about VHS that is so nostalgic and why do you think that collectors are uh, collecting VHS. And for me... They're getting more uh, and more popular every year. It is. For me, it's very nostalgic mm. and it takes me back to a time when I had no friends and I spent a lot of time watching horror films all by myself. I used to go on Friday night to the video store and just get the next 10 in the mm. horror section and watch them uh, or get pizza if I did have friends or friends over at the time. We used to get pizza and go to the video store and spend ages choosing it. And every time I watch a video and it has those sweet, sweet bits of nostalgia, especially X rentals that have all the ads before it, like, don't copy this film, you wouldn't steal the car. Uh, it just takes me back. Yeah, it makes I, me happy. I think it's the quintessential part of any 80s or 90s kid's childhood was going down and getting those videos from the video store. And I don't know about you, but when I was young, my parents didn't really go out and buy new videos. We always just had to rent. And that was the only way we were getting these films. They're so, expensive. 30, yeah, 35, yeah. 40 dollars so for a video is too much. You always had that static there. And you always had the trailers to sit through and those anti-piracy ads and everything. Yeah. And you yeah. used to hate it at the time, but now as an adult you're like, yeah, yeah. ads before my video, yeah. this is awesome. Do you, want, do you want to get into it? Yeah, we better yeah. get into it. So this is Liam and I's top five VHS that we currently own. Yeah, not, not in any order. So speaking of nostalgia, my uh, number five pick is The Max. Uh, this is an animated series uh, based off the Sam Keith comic. Uh, this is, is, yeah, a real huge part of my childhood because I used to stay up and this was my introduction to alternative animation. And I remember watching SBS late at night and waiting for liquid television also eat carpet to come on. And then there were these MTV cartoons. There was this and there was also The Head which we've got as well. The Max follows a homeless man who is living in this weird psychedelic dream that he is the protector of the jungle queen in the real Australia. It's not the Australia we they teach in geography or we live in. Um, it's a made-up Australia. It's a beautiful uh, land full of uh, fancy creatures and it's absolutely wonderful. It's depressing as hell like a lot of these cartoons were. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. My number five is very nostalgic for me, as most of them are. Uh, this is the Walt Disney Cartoon Classics Pluto VHS. Now, I owned this as a little kid. It was my favourite thing in the whole wide world. I watched it on repeat. I got rid of it. And then it took me a little while to find it again when we first started collecting VHS. I managed to find all of the gold classic collection at least most of them, at the tip. And it was like a dollar each, I think. Is that where we got it? From the yeah, tip? Yeah, yeah, from the tip again. We got so many good videos there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is just classic Pluto cartoons and I just love re-watching it again and again and again. I always remember those ones. They were always available in the video store. I remember sending my mum in. I'd be like, Mum! Mum! I want the Goofy movie! Bring me the Goofy movie, Mum! Mum! Hey, Mum! 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 I want then, Disney Mum! Yeah, and then she'd come back with one of those and would just be like, Oh, Walt Disney Classics? Gold goofs. See, I would have been excited for that, but you were sad. Mm. Okay, my next pick is Evil Dead. Oh, that's a very uh, obvious pick. Yeah, but um, it's 
not for obvious reasons though. Uh, this one here, this specific version, is a not for resale VHS of Evil Dead that came free with the pre-order of Dreamcast Hail to the King, which is an awful game, but pre-ordering this through Electronics Boutique, you got a free copy of Evil Dead. Now, the funny thing about this is that this was like an M15 game, so I could pre-order this and play it old enough as it. under 15. But for some reason, they gave away a hard R full of uh, tree tree fun. <laughs> I like that you carefully I, I, I realize that I've got a sense of that. Um, yeah, it's, if you've seen it, it's really intense, but also one of the best examples of low budget horror you will ever see in your life. And it's followed up by Evil Dead 2, which in my opinion is the greatest film ever made. So yeah, like this version, I... I sold when I was young because I got rid of my VHS. He used collection. to have a wall. Mm. I remember going to his house for the first time, and yeah. it was just wall to wall, like he'd have wallpaper, but how just I, VHS. How I courted you. I know he wooed me with VHS, yeah. and now it's like twelve years I, I later, and he still wooed me. I slowly sealed you in with VHS, and you didn't notice. <laughs> my next pick is a magical Nickelodeon film. Back when live-action Nickelodeon films were the greatest thing ever, like anything with Kenan and Kel in it. Can I hear it? For Good Burger. Anyway, uh, I have this one. It's Harriet the Spy. Uh, and it was a magical film all about a teen spy. And she brought a yellow jacket and had a little notebook. And I desperately wanted to be like her. And I used to have this little, like, Terry Denton, who's an Australian, like, dude. And he made, like, a little spy kit. And I owned it. And I used to take it everywhere because I wanted to be like Harriet the Spy. You never knew that, but there you go. <laughs> and I used to keep a little, like, magnifying glass in my pocket because I wanted to be like her. <laughs> There's a lot of dust in these VHS. And it's all up in my nose. Anyway, I'm going on. Oh, this... Oh god, that was itchy. It was a okay, head. now this was a magical video, not only because Harry the Spy, but it's also a rarer version because the tape is fluorescent orange. Look at that baby. Uh, they didn't be kind rewind, which kind of annoys me. I haven't had a chance to watch this yet, so that's not my fault. Uh, but yeah, beautiful orange There's VHS. Uh, it's oh, yeah. a sick CIC video. It's a magical video. So my pick is Harry the Spy. If you've never seen it and you're a young kid, you should watch it. Uh, and for all of us, we should just watch it again and again and again. My next pick is absolutely no surprise to anyone who knows me and knows how much I love this film and how obsessed with it I am. It is Akira by Katsuhiro Otomo. And the reason wait, why... Wait, wait, wait. Didn't you choose that as a Laserdisc pick? I did. I don't think it's fair if you choose a Laserdisc and VHS. The Laserdisc was the dubbed version. It is my preferred dub, but it was dubbed nonetheless. Whereas this one is the original Japanese version with English subtitles, so therefore I class it as a different film. And it's got the special feature, doesn't it? Yeah, so the reason why this is so good is that it also includes the production report, which is... Mm, so many this, VHS! Oh, yeah, 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 see the subtitle version? The production report is this here, which is about a 90 minute featurette, maybe? Uh, anyway, it's pretty long, and it's a making of uh, the the film, and it's the reason why it's so great is that it was before the film came out and before they knew it was going to be as big as it was, and they filmed this whole behind the scenes thing, and you see how tirelessly all the animators worked on these hand drawn animated it's films, incredible. and it was Akira was really the last of its kind, and. I, I feel that this production report is essential for anyone who loves Akira because you see it was just a bunch of really hard working artists working in this tiny little office in the middle of Tokyo. This uh, magical thing Liam found in the market for me when I wasn't there one day and you paid how much for it? I paid 20 cents for this classic. 20 cents? I've never seen this before. Apparently there's 13 or more of these. It is the Smash Hits Magazine VHS. Now this isn't like a VHS that came along with a magazine, this is like a, a video version of a magazine. So it's got interviews, video clips, like screenshots of hunks, uh, it's got little tidbits and facts about movie stars, it's got interviews with like Marky Mark, and it's hosted by the band Right Said Fred, mm. that's sung the band yeah, Aunt, just sexy from my car. Liam like literally they texted are. me and he was like, who the hell are Right Said Fred? He didn't even know who they were. But yeah, the Marky Mark interview is really intense. Yeah, it's pretty really street. Really off-putting. It's, it's yeah. very street. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the back kind of explains it all, it tells you all the interviews and everything. Uh, there's nothing I want more in my life than the complete set of Smash Hits magazine VHSs. Lots oh. of 90s music, had Macaulay Culkin, had all kinds of good stuff. I love the case as well. Oh yeah, it's look so, at this. It's so cheap. It's so cheap, but it's like <laughs> sweet. Listen, yeah. everyone. Oh, 
that sweet VHS squishy case noise. Uh, my number two is a film that is god awful in every single way. What are you even talking it's production about? values, it's acting, it's everything is terrible. Can I just be honest with you? I completely disagree with Liam. It's mm. a magical film that should be shared for generations to come. It is rubbish. Anyway, Slumber Party Massacre 2. And mainly it's because of this dude on the front and this cover. He kills people with an electric guitar! A double-headed electric guitar! Well, well, it's got a drill on the yeah. front. Amazing! <laughs> it, it's just, it's absolute garbage. If you love hair um, metal and heavy metal coolness and chicks in cool outfits yeah. with big hair and fog machines and lots of blood, then but you it's, 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 okay. It's... Last, I think, five, ten minutes are great. But like all those 80s horror films, you're always waiting for those last ten minutes. Thrills, chills, and guitar drills. Yeah, cover art. That's, that's why you get these films. Yeah, it's back the, in the day, the if I art. saw that city on a shelf, I'd be right in there. Mm. I'd hide that without even blinking. <laughs> and also, look at this sweet horror section VHS. Do you know that's an X rental? Ooh, yeah, and this yeah, that's video from, easy it's from rental. Movie Land Movie in Queue. Land in Queue. What a magical video. This next one, Liam got at a horror movie. Mm, the Fitzroy Film Fair. Fitzroy Film Fair. And I had to work that day, so I didn't get to go. But Liam went and he got me so many treasures. And among them was this beautiful VHS of a movie called The Gate. It has a squishy case. Uh, it also makes a cool noise when you open it. Uh, <laughs> and the thing that's really great about it is it's a little bit bubbly. The picture is, and it's metallic and shiny. Can you see that? I hope that's coming up in the camera. On the front and even on the back pictures, the frames around it is all glittery and red. I had never seen this horror film before and I just fell in love. The minute we started it, I just loved every moment of it. I love the creatures, the special effects. It's so tense. It's like a monster movie, mm. but also a thriller. Uh, the production design is fantastic. It's like amazing. Those final scenes were just insane. And uh, this is notable for, I think it's Stephen Dorff's first film? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, and there was a sequel that the director made with the neighbour from this film, but it didn't do anywhere near as good. But I, th I hadn't seen this either, we both went in blind. Yeah. We got it mainly, like I said, with uh, Slumber Party Massacre 2. A lot of these films you buy just for the cover art, and a lot of the time like you look at those old films and they had cover art that didn't even match the film itself. Yeah. They, they knew that that would sell. If they invested in good yeah. cover art, then their movie would sell. Yeah. Okay, you know with our laser disc hole, how I cheated? And I had more than uh, did, more than five. Did you do it again? I did it again. I think mm. it's going to be an ongoing theme that I've, I've created for All myself. Right, well, show us your last movies. Um, anyway, so my number one is Troma Movies. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I that's think... valid. Troma is just a movie. Yeah. So we've only got two at the moment. We've got Cannibal the Musical, which, uh, if you're aware, is the very first film directed by Trey Parker of South Park. And it it's is, a spadoinkle day! It is amazing. Uh, he he made this for, I think, about $50,000 that he got from university at the time and sold it to Troma for nothing. He just wanted to get the film out there, so he sold it for nothing because he knew that Lloyd Kaufman, the director of Troma, would... Push it and let it see the light of day. And Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, which is uh, a, a little culturally insensitive, but it is fantastic. And the reason why I lump these together is that they're both through trauma. And trauma for me is my childhood. I remember going to the video store and hiring Surf Nazis Must Die, Blood Sucking Freaks, stuff, Stephanie the Incinerator, Blood Sucking Freaks, <laughs> Toxic Avenger Part One, Two, Three, and now Four. Uh, Tremio and Juliet, Terra Firma, they were all classics and they were the films that you wanted to watch as a kid and you felt dirty watching because they were just total chaos on screen and I remember especially seeing down to films like Tremio and Juliet <laughs> and just being so like you feel throwing, really naughty watching that movie I was just so movie. thrown back like, and Ooh. it's so offensive in every way it's just if it could just ooze garbage and filth and sex and <laughs> blood it, it would because Teen that is what Trent romance. is and that's what Lloyd Kaufman is just uh, perfect at managing it's just there are no film no scenes that just kind of play out as normal they're all totally batty and 
all the characters, even in the backgrounds, are all part of the yeah, scene. Yeah, everyone seems around. to be a character. No there one's are, kind of left out of a scene. Yeah, there are boobs flying around everywhere. It's just, it's total insanity. <laughs> And if you haven't seen any trauma, you should fix that because it is absolutely brilliant. It's and actually one of the first things mm. that we ever bonded over mm. was trauma films. Yeah. And they're totally independent in every way. And I just feel that when I was young and I went to the video store for VHS, trauma were always the first things I would sneak into my pile, hoping nobody would notice. <laughs> and every time they did. My final one is very, very nostalgic. And every time I go to a video store, I open up the case to see if it has a limited edition belly button tattoo with the band's logo on it, the Hanson logo. I found it one time and it got stuck to a piece of paper and I lost it and now I need to find that it was a That was a terrible I day. I was very upset I cried. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I am talking about the Hanson Tulsa Tokyo at the middle of nowhere VHS. I don't want to tell you how many times I've watched this. It is the very first thing that I played in our VHS player over there. It was a very exciting day to go back to that time. I've memorized every single word to every single scene in here, and especially Zach's scenes. I don't know why, but I liked him a lot. He wasn't my favorite member, but I thought he was very comedic, so I used to mimic every scene he had. Yeah, I saw your lips moving as you watched it, like the whole time you were just like, <laughs> oh, but my favourite part in this whole VHS is when they're in Melbourne in the car park. Yeah, yeah. And we figured uh, out which it, car park Ring, it is. Ringwood Hoyts Ringwood on the, the red We still haven't done that. We no, no, no. Go... Ringwood Westfield, sorry. Yeah, we were going to go on a trip to go see, but they did a big concert there and they had to shut the whole car park and it was full. And I remember as a teenager seeing that on the news and I couldn't go. I didn't, I didn't live in Melbourne at the time and I was devastated. This is a perfect time capsule of Hanson at the height of their popularity. And to 99.9% .9 of people out there, they they just shrug and be just like, yeah, so? The scariest um, part ever is when I'm at work and I'm putting Hanson on and a kid goes, who is this? And you say Hanson and they don't know what that is. And it's upsetting. It's like actually upsetting, but that's what you're saying about the <laughs> yeah, yeah, So it's we're it's... buying these things to give them new life. When people come over, like our friend Fred came over the other night and we let him choose from the wall which VHS he wanted to watch. It was Skateboard, Skateboard Kid, Kid, which yeah. is great. But that's what it's about, having friends over, choosing VHS you've mm. never seen and watching it. And you've got to talk about these things and you've got to share them with people. And I think there are a lot of films on VHS that are not on DVD. And they never and you'll, will be You'll released. never find them on DVD. The physical media format it's dying, like they've released Blu-ray, they're trying with 4K and then they'll probably be 8K or whatever. Yeah, but it's but just dying. It's dying and that's the thing, it's just a lot of these films are going to be lost. You're not going to get them on DVD and I think it's so important to track these things down and collect them and hang on to them and talk to the people that you care about, talk to strangers on the internet about these things and just go, hey, this is what I really enjoy, you might like it too. So I think that's one of the greatest things about collecting VHS is that they're completely inexpensive. You can jump on eBay and grab them, um, but a lot of the time you just go to op shops and things and markets and you'll find plenty of them. What is, uh, before we go, uh, Holy Grail? My Holy Grail would be... Do we start? I already know what yours is. I think mine is the same as yours. Brain Dead? Yeah, Brain Dead, the bubble case. Yeah, the one with Why the, sti the stick-out cover. Why did you saw it? Uh, no, 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 I have never seen it. I thought you saw it no, at, I, the, I, at the fair. No, I asked him and he said go talk to this guy, but I already had two arms full of VHS oh. and I only had card and I didn't accept cash. Anyway, so it is the cover that you'll probably, uh, you probably know from uh, going to the video store yourself. It has the guy and he's ripping his skull open and there's a little baby coming through and it sticks out and everyone pushed it in and destroyed the cover. They'd be really excited if you found a copy of it with the face pushed like just, just, just as it's just, just like like pristine, pristine, mint. But that is our yeah. holy grail. That's our holy grail. Yeah, it's mine too. Later dudes! Bye!